Yeah, the first way you can play a rebuy tournament is to take a double buy-in right away. You buy in for whatever it is. Take a rebuy so you can have a double stack and then play it like a freeze out. Just play a regular strategy, play it like a freeze out. Hope that people who are treating it like a rebuy give you action. You can double up more easily because people are more willing to part with their chips being that it's a rebuy tournament. But then, no matter what, um, you have to take the add-on when it comes around. So effectively, you're buying, and whatever the buying for the tournament is, say it's five dollars, you're getting it for triple that. So it's a fifteen dollar freeze out for you. If it's, if it's a twenty dollar buy-in, it's effectively a sixty dollar freeze out. Uh, the the add-on is mandatory, even if you have like first place chips by by a million, it's still worth taking the add-on. Uh, the other way to play it is as you should, like a rebuy. Um, be prepared to get in for seven to nine total buy-ins in worst case scenarios. I Take the double stack right away. Lamprey raise. Massive HUD. HUD. Um, yeah, take the double stack right away and then since it's a rebuy period, allow yourself to play a little bit looser than you otherwise would. Be more willing to go for it with draws. Be more willing to, you know, do some floating, gambling with five outers, and then trying to take pots away on later streets. Because worst case, if you get looked up or you miss your draw, you just buy more chips. Um, but always take the double stack. And that way you have the best chance of coming out of the rebuy period with a big stack, which will make the rest of the tournament much easier to play. But yeah, playing that style as well, you're taking the add-on. If you don't have enough money in your account to do any rebuys or any add-ons, don't play a rebuy tournament because you're going to be you're just going to be dead in the water. Like so far in this tournament, like 28, 30% of the field is gone and the real tournament hasn't even started yet. That's a lot of really good value. That's a lot of dead money. That's uh, one of the benefits of playing rebuy tournaments. Silver status on party poker now. I don't know what that means, but I know it's better than bronze. And for for the guys who are like who play on poker stars, because you're like, well, they have the best VIP system, you know. They get silver star, platinum star, supernova. All of the now that things have been like kind of standardized, all the poker sites have something similar. They just have different names. Like on uh, Pacific Poker, you're a different type of material.
copper, bronze, iron, wood um, party. It's just types of metal as well. And on game, it's like chest levels. So they, they all have that same thing where you can climb up a VIP ladder and get uh, a higher percentage rewards for your play. So just thought I'd throw that out there if that's your only reason for playing on Party Poker or Poker Stars. That's not enough. If you have other reasons for playing there, that's cool. Oh, the guy bets full pot. I'll check call. But not going to go too crazy after that. He's pretty passive, so if he bets full pot again, I'll let it go. But he's not he's not as passive as the other guy was. He might just be a bet one check two kind of guy. Yeah. So player tendencies trumps sizing tells. I think I'm going to get back to raising more buttons at this 50 and I'll, um, At uh, 10 and I'll, people were defending everything. And at uh, 25 and I'll, there was still a good amount of defending. But I think at 50 and I'll, most players are not going to be defending their blinds. So it would make, make sense to raise wider on the button to just try to pick up a lot of dead money. And to play a lot of pots in position. Dahlia, hope you missed. Table five. Table 10, I'm going to go for a showdown. So far, this guy's folded to 100% of raises after donk betting on table 9, so I'm going to raise. He did not fold to this one, but that's a scare card on the turn. So, I'm going to bank on him not having led with two pair, because I think he might check raise with that, and I am going to apply a lot of pressure. Success! You got a 10, bro? I know you're betting whether you got it or not, so I call. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I would never fold there on table table 10. The guy's aggression is 7. He's going to bet when I check back, like, every time. Um, with 10 pairing on the river, it's pretty unlikely that he has a 10. And he's going to be betting his entire range there, so... I'm beating all but uh, slow played over pairs, unlikely, pocket nines, and like some random straight hand. So yeah, I'm, I'm calling. I'm doing well enough against the range, just unlucky that we ran into the top of his range in that particular hand. I can't believe I missed the add-on. I am I'm real tilted about that. No bet when checked to this time. Damn. Okay, well, it's a bet now. Hope you got an ace, bro.
first place in this five dollar freeze out is eight hundred and fifty bucks. Two seventy one left and top eighty paid. Cool. Uh, one good thing about these small buy in tournaments is that since people play so bad <laughs> and like are so just like willing to stack off and stuff, it's fairly easy to make it to the money in them a good amount of the time. Like you could probably cash a small buy in tournament thirty or forty percent of the time actually, which is very high for tournaments, but people are just so bad that it's just doable. And anytime you can cash a tourney, that means you get at least a free play for the next one. Because a min cash is gonna be, you know, one point five to two times the buy in. Like this one it's it's double the buy in. So if I cash this one that's that's a free shot at the next one and I didn't lose any money on this one. Obviously, we're not just trying to cash, but it's worth noting. And now antis are in play in the uh, $5 tournament. So that means we're going to, if we get chips, we're going to start opening a wider range than we would have pre-ante. And we're going to be able to move all in with a wider range of hands than we could pre-ante as well because there's more dead money in the pot. Therefore, there's a higher reward for successful shoves and... Higher reward means you can take higher risk. But at this point, uh, it's about just either making good shoves or making good calls and then hoping that the cards cooperate. And patience. Lots. King. Hopefully I didn't cooler myself again. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just call. This time I have position, unlike uh, the hand at the start of the week where I was out of position, so I just wanted to get it in. This time I have position, I can control the pot. Okay, nice. I like that he checks. Makes me think we probably have the best hand. On table five, three bets, pretty high. So I'm going to four bet. <laughs> and Jack 10 suited is a sweet hand to be four betting with because that's not one of the hands he's going to put me on. 
So, on a lot of flops, if he ever flats the 4-bet, he's going to think there's no way I could have hit, and I'm just going to be like, nah, bro, Jack-10 suited. Pretty sweet hand. Wow, wait list 11th. It's no good. Didn't call the ace queen. Let me check back. So I have the best hand? Okay, I bet. Ooh, aces in the tarny. Um, yeah, I bet again. You could call me with a weaker ace or a king. And I'm not check folding, so. Oh, this guy's just committed himself to the pot. Cool. Well, I'm all in. Make it smaller there. It might be kind of obvious what I have. He's going to be getting 2 to 1, so I think he's priced in. I hope that's queens and not some sort of suited. Ooh, but I made a boat. I made a boat. So it's getting in pretty good. All my chips with a little bit of dead money for 80% um, favorite. Yeah, I'll take it. We were one card away from elimination, though, damn. Uh, so this guy's giving us almost 3 to 1. And with two overs and a flush draw, we could go at 2 to 1. And if we have one over and a flush draw, we have 3 to 1. So as long as he doesn't have a set or aces calling, here's fine. And there's a very outside chance that he's barreling with worse. <laughs> nice joke turn card. Oh, you know what that was? He quit. It's the old last hand syndrome. Well, if I'm going to stop playing soon, I might as well raise up my last hand. It doesn't make it good. It's not a good enough reason to raise King-9 offsuit. going to leave, but this game is showing some potential. So I'm in. Alright. We're going to do our first light raise in the tourney. We now have the chips to afford it, and uh, Big Blind was pretty short. Gotta turn the HUD off in these turnies. I can't see who's in the pot. Guess I'm just gonna call. Didn't really see any point in raising the turn with the queen four. All in. That's a bet I will respect. Worst, <laughs> worst turn on table 10. Okay, I, th I, th I thought we were at the bottom of the barrel, but apparently we can go down. Oh, I won. Cool. 
maximize my value by check calling that flop instead of betting. A, risking getting raised, and B, getting him to fold. That kind of stuff. Oh, please. Please let me win a stack on table five. The guy's all bad and stuff, playing 40 slash 9. He's super aggro, so when I check back, I can definitely expect him to blast. Turn a flush on table 3, but the price is poor, and I don't don't know which cards I'd want to represent on the river. It don't hit me, so without a plan, um, no real sense in getting over involved. And just, just please let the queens be good. This guy's so great. I mean, he's just so aggro. So aggro. I think if I lost that pot, that was going to be the end of our 50 NL adventure, and we were going to go back down to 25 NL, and you guys would have been like, fuck you, Gripst. We don't want to see them fucking low stakes. We want to see, we want to see slightly higher stakes, less low. But played it the way I had to. Um, and just fortunately, he was, he was the idiot that the stats indicated he would be. first part of the week of these videos, we, we ran pretty bad, which is always unfortunate when you're first taking your shot to be getting cooler at a bunch and stuff. It's never fun. But uh, managed to stay reasonably disciplined, not spew off too much. <sighs> Maybe things are starting to turn and we're running a little better. I will just call with pocket sixes just to, just to test our run good right now. Mr. Ronaldo, let's hope you have an ace, want to get the max value, bet uh, many street, I call, I am, I am marginal, I am weak, you move me off my hand, no problem. Just thinking of like... The rivers. There are a lot of bad rivers that could kill the action. I'm going to go ahead and put in a raise now. And hope that he actually has the hand he was representing pre flop and on the flop. Because um, if he has a good ace, he's going to have trouble folding here. Mm. It's, a bad, it's not the best river. Still gonna go for it. Um, Ace King, maybe call, and maybe uh, maybe Ace Queen call. I'm really hoping for him to have Ace Queen or something like that. What happened on this hand? Did this guy just like <laughs> block bet me the whole way down and then river me and got fifty cents of value? Well played, sir. Huh? I wish that river had not been the eight of clubs just because it makes it way harder for me to get paid if I have him here. But what are you going to do? Better an eight than a jack. Because then I really don't beat shit. I got check back flop on table nine. I should probably bet. I might be getting hero called here. This guy probably has like a pocket pair. And he wanted to pocket for the flop. But uh, King's a good barrel card. So I'm going to do that. Oh, and look. Ronaldo had exactly what I needed him to have. Ace-queen. I check. He probably checks. 
So can't be scared. Gotta get that value. It's hard to flop sets. It's really hard to flop sets when other people have two pair. You've got to get paid when those situations come up. We're making a nice comeback. Yes. Only took me 2008. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm most excited about the comeback because I ideally want to keep playing 50NL for the next couple of weeks for these videos. I think there's been enough content at the 10NL or... Uh, yeah, the 10 NL and the 25 NL games that you guys are ready for the next level. And I also assume that the guys who are watching the video are moving up along with the video. So it would make sense that we continue to go higher limits, higher limits, higher limits. I want to do, you know, maybe three weeks at 50 NL. And then, you know, three weeks at 100 NL. And I'll continue to start adding in these tournaments because they're fun. They give us a chance for a big score. And it's another thing that we can discuss. So you can... You can make your entire poker game more well-rounded. You can be a, be a more versatile player. Damn. Tables are breaking. But if Got the Nut 6 6 wants to get this game back in gear, we will oblige. And the thing I like about uh, 50 NL is that usually even the fishy players still have the $50 to buy in. And you don't have to play with like really micro stacks. Uh, when you're playing like 200 NL, 400 NL, 600, 1K, whatever, a lot of people are going to buy in really short and you have to deal with all these different like awkward stack sizes and figuring out how to adjust them and stuff. And it's kind of annoying. Whereas... At 50 NL, even the bad players, you know, they still usually buy in for 100 big blinds, so you don't need to be as experienced with all the different sizes to be able to play really well. That's one of the perks. I mean, I, I have a lot of good things to say about 50 NL, honestly. You're, you're making real money already. You, you kill it with clearing deposit bonuses and value back and rate back and VIP stuff and the games are good you know there are some tough players but most of them are reasonably straightforward in their play 50 cents I'm going to raise to just charge him a little bit if he has some random diamond if he has the ace of diamonds unlucky but I'm also doing it as a block bet or a freeze play for the river so I can just get a free showdown on the end rather than letting him set the price. Pick an amount I'm comfortable with, and then just stick with that. We got a bunch of wait lists. Eight of 11. These wait lists are insane. There's, these wait lists have 15 people on them. Like, what? How the hell am I supposed to get in a game when the wait list is 15 people deep? Absurd. And that is why. Anytime someone asks me where they should play, I say Betfair. There's no wait list. You don't have to deal with this if you weren't there when the game started. You're never going to get on the game situation. You can still sneak your way onto the tables. We're going to get fancy. Oh, he didn't let us. I was going to check raise the King Jack suited on table whatever, bottom left corner of the screen. <laughs> Too much action going on right now to figure out which table that was. Nice call. Nice call. See, he was smart. If you bet the turn, I check raise. He probably can't really call with bottom pair. Um, but by checking back, he guaranteed that he'd only be facing one bet on the river, and therefore he was able to just take his hand to showdown and win the pot. So, well played. I'm not going to try to pronounce that name, actually. That name is absurd. And with Jax, all the draws missed. I don't really know much about this guy other than he's very loose. So I'm going to take my 2.7 to 1, make a call. And all right, got rivered. Alright, on 
Andreas. 484. Let's play. Not the flop I was looking for. And the check raise on the turn would have been awesome with King Jack suited because if he's betting with air, he's going to fold. If he's betting with something like he had, he's probably going to have to fold to the check raise. But even if he has an ace, it's hard for him to re-raise in that spot. All he can really do is just call. And then we can decide on the river if we want to. We can decide on the river if we want to bet as a bluff, if we think we can get him off his hand, or we could just bet on the rivers that we hit, which is still like 25% of the time. We're going to connect with the river, and then he's going to be in a really tough spot facing a big bet. Uh, so our fold equity is really good. Uh, the only thing that's bad is if he has a set and he re-raises us, we don't get a chance to see whether we hit our draw or not. But two-thirds of the time we miss, so it's not like we hit all that often. And even on the times we do hit, with the flush, it's pretty hard to get paid. It's pretty obvious we hit it. And with the straight, we have good implied odds, but that one's a pretty big long shot to actually come to fruition.